Hello, viewers of the Champion Chess Tour. I'm Grandmaster Simon Williams, otherwise known as the Ginger GM, Ginger Grandmaster. And I'm going to be bringing you a puzzle of the day for you guys at home to try and solve each day. Now, this first example is taken from a game of two lovers or rivals. Rivals, I think, is the fair one. I'm only jesting. And that is the fantastic Magnus Carlsen, the current world champion with the white pieces. And today it's Anish Giri's day with the black pieces. He gets a great win on the board here. This was played in about 2012 in the Tata Steel competition in the Netherlands. Magnus plays Rook D1, supporting his pawn on D5. Anish now uses Eddie the E pawn to push forwards, e4, attacking the knight there and releasing the bishop. Magnus now moves his knight to g5, and this is the critical position. Now, have a think about this. I'm going to bring you the answer live in the show later on. If you want to follow these puzzles daily, do go to Chessable, where you can get the preview each day before I show them here. There's a little free course on these puzzles available but it's black to play and win and try to calculate this one as far as you can. The first move may be quite obvious, but always think of your black, your opponents, in this case, white's best defensive measures and see if you can calculate a couple of moves ahead. That's a sign of a great chess player. Good luck. And I'll be back later to show you the answer. Stay tuned. Now for those chessable viewers, I'm going to give you the answer. And the answer is, first of all, E3. I think this is a fairly obvious move. It breaks the communication between the queen and the knight. And after the queen moves, and queen b6 is the right square, we now capture that knight. Now, obviously, if you got this far, you're doing OK. But we should, and you should have calculated that little bit further. For example, what happens if queen takes b6 is played? Well, Anisha's idea here was to play the fantastic e2, attacking the rook. And to really become a good chess player, you had to see the point that after rook e1, the only obvious square, otherwise we're going to take the rook and queen, we can play queen takes bishop, rook takes, and now this is a four sequence. I'm hoping some of you saw we get another queen. This has to be removed. Only one way to block the check. And now bishop h3. And if you got this far in your, your calculations, you're obviously on your way to being a great chess player. But this is how far the top players see. Now, going back to the position, after queen takes g5, Magnus played quick, bishop takes e3. Maybe this is his idea to try and get some play here, but it's a simple solution. And that is queen g4 attacking the rook. And this retains the extra piece with a one game. Hello everyone at Chess Ball. I'm continuing bringing you some famous examples from famous games in this free course just to see if you can find the solution to these, I'd say, entry level and historical moments during chess. Now, this one is one of the first games I saw and it turned me on to playing the King's Gambit between Adolf Anderson and Lionel Bagration Feli. And this was a casual game, apparently played in The Simpsons and the Strand, which is still a place uh, which exists in London. I've been there, has a bit of chess history, well worth visiting if you're ever around the Covent Garden area. And it was called The Immortal Game, this one. I mean, rarely has a game such as this where white gives up so much material against really a full army of blacks being played. And it, it really has that romantic feeling about it. Now, it's white to play and win here. And can you guys work out the correct sequence to finish off this game? Played in 1851, I should have mentioned as well. Well, the correct move is to start with knight takes g7 check, forcing a way into the position. And there's only one option that black can do here. And this devastating effect of all these pieces is quite phenomenal. The king has to go to d8, and now a slightly tricky move to see, but a beautiful move, queen f6 check. This is diverting the knight away from the defense of e7, 
the queen has to be taken. And now bishop e7 delivers this immortal checkmate, a simply uh, brilliant final position and one that has gone down in chess history. Uh, so uh, you've got to know your classics, and this is a classic. Now, we couldn't have this series of, of great ideas for some of the best players ever and historical moments uh, without including a couple of uh, Bobby Fischer, who, who did at the time really shook the chess world. And the other thing about Fischer, his long-term influence on chess, especially in the West of the world, Europe, America, um, was maybe more, uh, it, sh it sent more earthquakes, shockwaves through the world than any other player before him. There was a wave of popularity in chess, which came about from him, uh, his journey to the world championship match. Americans took it up, Europeans took it up. And those effects from uh, a long time ago, 50 years ago, are still uh, uh, can be clearly seen in, in Western chess worlds. Now, in this position, he is playing as white against Samuel Reshevsky, who is uh, was a prodigy from America. And Samuel had just moved his knight back to e8, thinking he might be quite safe here. But Bobby Fischer showed him that it's not safe. And he played a very devastating two-part combination here to win material. Uh, can you see the line that Bobby Fischer used? This is from the US Championships in 58-59. Uh, in, in New York, his home, his, his hometown. Well, he started with bishop f7 check. Uh, and this move is great because we want to get our knight to e6. We have to move the pawns defending that one. If rook takes knight e6, funnily enough, traps the queen. The queen can't come anywhere. If the knight is taken, we win that queen. We win the game. So... Black tried king takes, but the knight now came into this square anyway. Brilliant. That queen again is trapped. And now, well, d takes was tried, but the queen was lost. If the king takes, we can now hunt that king down. That king should not be able to survive so freely in the open of the position. And I'm actually going to leave it to you here now just to see how you can finish that black king off. Look for checks, look for the most forcing moves, and you should be able to work out how to checkmate the king. Uh, and I'm just going to leave that one floating there, which is probably going to annoy you, but at least it will make you think.